First Things First is sponsored by Gillette, the best a man can get. Welcome back to First Things First. Look who's here, Eric Mangini, Number Handshake. One. Number one. Yeah. Yeah. All All coach, how are you? That's my guy. We set quite a table for Coach today. We made sure we were Got a lot fired up. A lot spiced up. up. Well, he's given us segment ideas. He's given us segment like, ideas. Next hot you know, seat. Which coach is on the hot seat this week? Analyzing, you know. All of it, Coach. Clearly, we need it. All right, let's just talk some football <laughs> first. Let's take a look at the Dallas Cowboys, who enter the bye week at 2-3. and three. They've lost five of their last seven games going back to last season, including the last two weeks to the Packers and Rams. Nick Wright, do the Cowboys still look like a playoff team to you at this point? They look like a playoff team, but as I think both of you guys can attest to, there are a lot of teams, I shouldn't say a lot, there are a few teams every year that have the talent, that have the ability, that – could, should, could be a playoff team, but don't end up getting the requisite wins to actually make the tournament. Like teams that you think, hey, if we were to rerun, run this season back, a couple of those bounces we talked about yesterday go our way, and we're 11 and 5 instead of 9 and 7, but we're 9 and 7, we needed I mean, those 10 not wins. That's how life works. No, I, right, but the, so there's, there's two things. Like, Unless one you're is, playing Madden. One is, well, hold on, hold on. There's, <laughs> there's, you. do the Cowboys look like a team in disarray? To me, no, they don't. Do the Cowboys look like a team without an identity? To me, no, they don't. Do the Cowboys look like a team that can play with the best teams in football? I think, yes, they do. But can the Cowboys overcome a two and three start, two home losses, back to back blown double digit leads in what I think is the far more difficult conference in the NFC? I don't know the answer to that. I think it's going to take 10 wins minimum in the NFC to make the playoffs. That means you got to go eight and three the rest of the way with a brutal following schedule. So they look good enough to be a playoff team, but how big of a hole have they dug themselves is the question. Now, I, I look at Dak Prescott, and I'm more sold on Dak now than I was last year, and I think he's made a, a tremendous amount of progress. And the things I've heard about him, his work ethic, all, all, all those things trend towards growth, trend towards And, Coach, him you're a better. body of the work. Type guy, you, you're you're one. That, you're more apt to err on the side. Say, I need to see a little more. Yeah, definitely. Because when you look at a guy as rookie season, we saw it with RG3, where a guy can pop off the screen. Everybody just assumes that the trajectory is going to stay going going upwards. But knowing people on the staff, knowing people that have dealt with him, his progress, his development, his growth, mm -hmm. his work ethic. All those things to me have been outstanding, and I'm much more sold than I was last year. Now the issue they have is they've given up over 35 points in three out of these five losses, and I don't know how much they're going to be able to change defensively. I don't know how much they're going to be able to improve defensively over the over the course of the season, and especially if Sean Lee is in and out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. He is critical to making that work, not yes. only as a player, but also as uh, as the quarterback. He He's essentially the quarterback and runs the defense. So that, to me, is, is a huge concern. It, go ahead. There's two concerns, players. Sean Lee, you bring up a good point. Because also, if we have Sean Lee in at the end of the game, he's the spy on Aaron Rodgers and doesn't let him get up the sideline on the third down conversion. All right? Also, because of lack of experience in the secondary, I'm concerned with Rod Marinelli, what he's going to call. All right? A lot of people are like, well, what is he talking about? I don't think that Dallas knows the ability of their secondary. They were playing two-man almost the last four plays of the drive. Now, you can't play two-man against a quarterback who runs, and you can't play two-man with young cornerbacks who let the wide receiver up the sideline. That's how Devontae Adams scores the game-winning touchdown. They're playing two-man. The coach calls it. The safety gets trapped inside. The guy lets him outside. So I'm with you. I don't know if that defense, I know it's not going to travel well. If you play defense like that at home, it's even worse on the road. And the biggest wild card happens to be what no one is talking about. What about Zeke's case? What if Zeke gets suspended? They won't make the playoffs. I, I think that's a big issue, too. Last, last year was Tony Romo, so they, they had that, that issue to deal with. This year, it, it's Zeke's issue, and, and it's also now the, the anthem issue. And, yeah, and, Jer it, it, and Jerry brought that yeah. on him. The Cowboys weren't in the middle of this at all. Like, the owners basically courted that controversy. And there's there's dealing with success. So they go into the season, they've got all these expectations. Everybody thinks they're going to be 
um, running away with, yeah. with, with, the, with the schedule, and, and that hasn't been the case. So how are these young players going to deal with adversity? Mm -hmm. Then you throw in the adversity that, that Zeke's facing, and now you throw in, and I know you don't like to use the word distraction, but this is a pretty yeah. big distraction. And the next game that they play is in San Francisco, where, where everything started. So <laughs> but, let's see how, the, how that all unfolds as well. But if you talk about a team, the difference between this Cowboys team and, and, and a playoff Cowboys team, shouldn't that be – Shouldn't the playoff bound team be the kind of team that could beat the Packers like that? Like to, to beat that, those good teams, to, to be able to win those games that are really close? Like, have yes, they beaten absolutely. the Packers? You say, you know what? This but, is like a really solid playoff agree, bound Jenna, team. But that's why I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be super reactionary because they could have beaten the Packers. They did have a lead with a minute left. I can't like play they, that game. They didn't. I, I, yes, I get and it. guess what? The Giants no, give them back two of those losses because no, those could have been win. No I doubt. Mean, but, but the, that is, but that gets to my original point, which is I think the Cowboys played well enough to beat the Packers. They didn't, but they played well enough. To it means it, nothing. Uh, of course it means nothing as far as their record. But when I'm evaluating the team, how yes. good are they, I can say you, did, you went neck, you went head-to-head -head with a team we yes. just spent 10 minutes discussing is the best team in the NFC. But now I'm going to do what is Coach's absolute favorite thing, which is look at the schedule moving forward. Oh, perfect. Because here is... <laughs> Here is the, and I know the team. I actually looked at this. it as well. It doesn't look that great moving forward. The, for them. No, that's so. Forget the fact they've lost two games at home. Let me tell you some of their road games. They got to go to Washington. Okay. They got to go to Atlanta. They got to go to Oakland. They finish the year in Philly. Those are four games that I believe Vegas is going to say they're underdogs. Now you win games as underdogs. That's fine. Well, okay. Well, is their home schedule easy? Oh wait, they have the Chiefs at home. No. They of course have Philly at home. They have Seattle at home. Their final four stretch, if, if you need, if they got to go three and one down the stretch of the season, here's what they have to finish the year. At the Giants, at Oakland, home for Seattle, at Philly. Now the Giants aren't good, but three out of four on the road to finish your year, you don't like seeing that. Like, this is, this is not a forgiving schedule that they have when you're trying to find a way. Do we all agree it takes ten wins probably this year? Yes. So they got to go eight and three. Look, if I'm Jason Garrett, I'm more worried about the next game yeah, against course. San Francisco. And then not just because it's the next game, but because you're, you're facing a team that's winless and, and you're going to have a ton of coverage on it. Yes. Not just because it's San Francisco, but because you're now the center of this debate mm -hmm. and, and teaching a young players not to underestimate, teaching any players not to underestimate an opponent is hard. And coming off the bye week, going to San Francisco, that, that's no luck. Keep in mind, a San Francisco team that, while winless, that they were, the, the, and Jenna won't like this, but they have. <laughs> this they close? No, they well, could no, be undefeated. No, no I'm not saying that. But, but that Cle much. Cleveland's getting beat soundly almost every week. San Francisco's lost in overtime. They lost on the final play of a game, essentially, to Arizona. Like, San Francisco is a team that you feel like is due for a win at some point. Right. Not, and I, let me just say this real quick. The difference between the Giants last year and the Giants this year is that the Giants won all those super close mm -hmm. games last year to get them to 11 wins. Yep. They are losing those games this year. Right. That is the difference between a good team and a team that's not a, a not a playoff that's a fair bound point. team. And with right the Cowboys, you could say the difference is last year when they had a double-digit lead at home, they ran away with it. This year they've blown it two weeks in a row. It's totally exactly. a fair point. All right, let's take a break. Coach, stick around. Uh, coming up, Tom Brady doesn't know what to make of his own team. Nick will most likely go through the schedule, oh, game by game. Geez. Win, win, loss, loss, win. Don't you want more? That's next on First Things.